What's going on, world? It's your boy, Can Too. If I can, you can too. This is the Riding High Sports coming live from the Riding High Podcast Studios. Today, we got a great episode. I hope y'all are having a wonderful evening. A lot of things we're going to talk about. We're talking about college football. We're talking about sports betting. We're talking about the UFC. And we got a crazy, crazy cool guest, Santiago Campos. This dude is awesome. The dude is a sports supplement specialist, top man's performance coach. This man knows a lot of things, and he's going to drop a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge for y'all i'm excited to have him let's bring him in santiago campos man thank you for coming man i appreciate you coming yes, for the right and nice sports sir, podcast man. how you doing minute, today man. yeah been good man it's been a minute man i appreciate having me on oh man thank you thank you um so man for the fans and the people at home that don't know anything about you where are you from well we're from uh i'm from corpus christi man okay born and raised yeah good old cc nice nice and uh where'd you end up going to school here in corpus Carol High. Carol High. That's, that's, uh, that's how, how me and you uh, got acquainted. Yeah, yeah. And we we actually know each other from way yeah, back. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, man. Um, I saw I saw, actually saw my boy, um, you know, uh, on some social media doing his thing and I'm very proud of the guy for what he's got accomplished and what he's doing. We're going to get all into that. So I had to bring him down. Um, I think his mindset and what he is and just being a, you know, a men's performance coach, um, yeah. the way you look at stuff, I, I just thought it would be a great fit for sports. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I full transparency. Sports is not my forte, mm-hmm. but the the mindset of a competitor in any sport, uh, in addition to the sport of life or the sport of business, is actually all the same. Yeah, you know, these guys are wired the same. So, yeah, man. I'm originally from Corpus Christi, and um, but I, I live in San Antonio, uh, born and raised here, of course. But uh, after after Carol went to UIW, where I got my uh, pursued my degree in nuclear medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a science guy, and I love helping people. And yeah. yeah, man, so that's how I kind of got in there. I still yeah. live in San Antonio. Oh, awesome. Let's let's take it back a little bit. We're going to talk about because he went to Carroll, you know, and he is um, cl- class of 06. 06. Class man. of 06. Um, and uh, them Carroll Tigers back then, uh, that, was, that was a good football team. Yeah, there man. That was a good football team. They we were ranked in the state of Texas. We held it down, man. Right. I was about to ask, so do you, you played football. See, yeah, tell him, man. man. See, he says he doesn't know sports, but the man <laughs> knows the sports. He was on one of the best football teams in high school. Um, played with a lot of players. He played yes, with so. some big names that went to big schools. Yes, sir. Uh, how did you get into football in high school? Like, how, how did you even, like, want to try out for the team? Like, what made you even do that? Man, you know, from a, a really young age, I was always super competitive, right? So, like, I did, I did like, Taekwondo at the, I started, like, at the age of eight. Awesome. I think when I was around 12, 12 to 13, I was already crossing the line where I was about to be black belt. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people don't know this, when you get into, when you actually become a black belt, you are essentially, you have to get registered a walking weapon mm-hmm. and so <laughs> as crazy to be conscious is at this age right but i i was a i was a uh, red belt two stripe mm-hmm. you know one more stripe i go black mm-hmm. and my guy was legit he was um he was a 10th degree black belt korean from from korea mm-hmm. like legit legit his name was Choi, and um they were like hey well you know you're coming up and when they started telling me that i was gonna have to register myself as, an, as a weapon if i got into a fight that I could get in trouble with the yeah, law. You can't. So I was like, "Well, nah, nah. Then I don't want to take this test." So I was like, "I don't, I don't want to." I was like, "This is you don't want to get in trouble." Yeah, because yeah. it, it's very true. It's no different. Um, they have the same role in boxing. Yeah. In boxing, once you, um, you know, you're a professional fighter, you're out there. Yeah. Your hands are legal weapons. One hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So, you know. so I've always super competitive in that. And I always did pee wee football. And like, I just love contact. I'm a, mm-hmm. I love I, I, contact. I'm, I never shy away from it. So. Um, but yeah, how I got into football was just, it was just really just peewee football and then always being in competitive sports. And then, and in college, I mean, I'm sorry, in high school, um, I did track wrestling and football. Oh yeah. You know, I remember that. I thought I saw, yeah, that's right. You yeah, did. Yeah. How was that? Like, it was dope, man. I mean, we started it. I mean, the initial, uh-huh. the, the team, what I was on the initial starting mm-hmm. of it, but, um, again, I, I loved it. I love being physical. And so that was interesting when I did all three, but, um, but yeah, man. I've always been into sports. What uh, in track? What what um? What were your? I'm I man. I'm a dasher, bro. You're a dasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm a, I'm a hundred, the two hundred meter, the hundred and two hundred, or the four hundred meter relay. Or the four, uh, okay, it was okay. A good one too, but I was you know after I hit about two hundred meters, once I hit that three hundred, uh-huh. though that gas started getting me, man. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I was a I was a sprinter. Yeah, no, I didn't do track in high school. I just did basketball. Yep. Um and. No, we, yeah, you know, we, we was we was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you held it down. Uh, 
And, um, but no, I in middle school and uh, elementary um, track. And I used to love to do the 100, 200. I thought okay. it was really cool. And then I also enjoyed uh, the long jump, the triple jump, and the high jump. That's what's up. I never got into those, man. I wasn't oh. much of a jumper, but oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mom was, uh, she used to say, like, just try them all. You don't know if you're good at them until you hey, try it, you know? 100. So I ended up doing really well with the high jump. I could I should have stuck with it. Uh, that was fun. Um, but yeah, that was great. So you, you did all that through high school. You get done with Carol. You're like, all right, I'm going to go to the University of Incarnate Ward in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You get to San Antonio. Did you think about, did you do like any intramurals or just focus on your studies and you just. Yeah, you know, look, I mean, I played sports in, in, a, in a variety of different ways. And, you know, my goal was, you know, I, once I graduated high school, I kind of did a little evaluation. I said, listen, I'm not the tallest guy. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm the, I wasn't the biggest guy in the room at the time. I wasn't, you know. 200 pounds and uh, you know I started realizing realized what am I going to do here and where I put my effort and I wanted to go scholastics I wanted to make sure that you know I was just going to be in the sports of knowledge just really trying to dig my head nobody had ever gone to college in my family it's like a first you know so I, I didn't really nobody really taught me how to, I had to navigate a lot and so I was like you know what like if I'm going to be the first like I got to do it right yeah and so that's yeah. that's what I did so I decided to uh I still lifted weights and everything. I was always in a weightlifter, but um, yeah, we just went in all on on the knowledge game. That's what's up, man. That's I mean, I, I respect that because it's true. Like, uh, you knowledge is key, right? And, yep. and, and um, it's a great way to help. It's a great way to live your life. And always wanting to learn, always thinking you need to learn more is it's a great aspect because you, no one knows everything. And um, it's just important to ask questions, important to gain knowledge and move on. So you get done with school. Um, you graduated, you said, what was it, uh, nuclear biology? Uh, so uh, in the study of uh, nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine, yeah, sorry. So nuclear it's, medicine. Um, I was originally a bio major okay. uh, studying for MCAT. Mm -hmm. uh, nuclear biology is it's a lot of uh, information retention, really, unless you're going to be a biologist, to basically take a test uh -huh. and then go to college and go learn more information. I wanted application. Yeah. And so um, at the University of Carter, they have a uh, program, it's, it's a nuclear medicine program. You have to get admitted in. Okay. Um, you have to go through that process, and then it's a two year uh, two year to get into that. And so, I graduated top five percent of oh, that congrats, nuclear man. medicine program, and uh, yeah, it was just application. I got to work in the hospital, and you know, and understand radiation therapies and all the different things of you know uh, radiation for. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you're working in the hospitals. You're doing all this. How does this go from like that is your career? That is what you're doing, and then. Um, you go into uh, like supplements. You go into or even get into like just becoming a men's performance coach. Like how does yeah. that happen? You know, that happens by God's hand, I'd, I'd have to say, right? Because it's, it's ultimately we, we can always have our own plan, but mm -hmm. you know, God always has the, the master plan. But, you know, so it, was, it wasn't until I was in the hospital and I, I have always had an appreciation for the body physiology, right? uh -huh. which is I've always exercised, I've always lifted. And so I always make sure I worked on my body. In addition to that, I always studied the body because of, you know, my degree and program and on and so forth. And so the body is an amazing machine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the body is an amazing machine. And so as I started working in the hospital, I loved helping people. And that's uh, a primary function of health care is to care for, for people's health. Right. Yes. And so I started caring and, you know, working in patient care and, and working in the hospital. And I realized that I really like this. But I also in my degree program. You know, we had to study a lot of what's called radio pharmaceuticals, right? Which mm -hmm. is basically when these things enter our body, what happens inside the body? What yeah. does it absorb? How does it work? And all these different things. And it's so funny is that when I started to study this, I really got interested on when something enters the body, mm -hmm. what effects happen, what gets stimulated, all these different things. What so happens that the supplement world works the same way. When you ingest a specific ingredient or a type mm -hmm. of supplement, they're called mechanism of action. So when put something in there's a cascade of different things that happen that create a result or a stimulation or a muscle contraction mm -hmm. whatever the case is and so i was like man i really like helping people and i'd, I'd, I'd like to continue to do fitness-based stuff and uh it wasn't until after i graduated college and i had to come back down for some family reasons down to corpus christi and um i always worked in college i always worked retail and so i came back down to corpus for for some family reasons and I decided to wander into a nutrition shop and say, hey, if you need a part-timer, just something to occupy some mm -hmm. time. And it just so happened that that's 
that's how I ended that, up. That's how your foot got in the that's supplement game. That's how I got into the supplement game. And uh-huh. I realized, I was like, hey, this is kind of similar. And then, you know, I kind of look, you know, look mm-hmm. around and I didn't really see anybody breaking supplements down to the science level so people could really understand, like, what was going on. And I was like, huh, maybe well, I can explain that better. And I think that just kind of started a cascade of just knowledge. That's what's up. It's crazy. It's just like something was... It's simple, like man. I was just looking for a part time. I was uh, just chilling, man. Yeah, uh, I was just, was just a little cash on the side because I was. Mm-hmm. I plan on, you know, I had at this point I had already graduated my degree, yeah. and I was looking at different states and different places where I was going to go for uh, nuclear medicine. Yeah, and you said you, man, you uh, you got into the supplement game. You started working, and then you end up growing uh, one of the largest uh, brick and mortars across the state of Texas, man. Yeah, right? man, that is one hundred. So, um, yeah, it wasn't intentional. I was I was supposed to actually go back for. Uh, for pharmacy mm-hmm. or, or you know or, or med school, um, but yeah, so it, it's that I started part time, man. It was just it was just supposed to be just a part time gig, and you know, um, I actually what do you call it? Wandered into a store called Rock's Discount Vitamins mm-hmm. here in Corpus Christi, and at the time, I, you know, I didn't really know the owner too well, but you know, we had a little we had a little sit down, and went from part time to he wanted to keep me full time, and then I stayed full time, and then I kind of started breaking some records for him, and. He started seeing like, dude, this dude is this dude is good. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, man, I was like, hey, by the way, man, like, I'm gonna be heading out here soon because, like, you know, that conversation we had that I'm going back to is still invalid, man. So I'm just letting you know, like, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll still, you know, work, yeah, I'll still yeah. grind it, you know. And he's like, well, how about I pay you more money and you stay? And I was like, I mean, I can stay a couple months, man, you know. So mm-hmm. then he just kind of. St- Kept trying to like raise up it, up it every raise time. it right because he realized that like this dude is just, He's just so, killing it. So basically, after a couple of years, you know, I had did about two million in sales at that location, and he was like, you know, loving. I say, like, hey man, I can't sell no better. Like I, we already hit two milli. Like mm-hmm. like I, I need more out of life. Mm-hmm. I said, man, I love it, bro. I said, but I, I'm a progressive guy. I always need to be progressing. I was like, so you know, we can do two things. I'm moving back to San Antonio. I'm gonna go for pharmacy back to pharmacy school i mean going to graduate program i was like or i can expand your company for you here in san antonio mm-hmm. so either way i'm moving to san antonio i go so it's up to you what you'd like to do i can expand your company mm-hmm. so we can partner and i can grow it or i'm moving to san antonio and go for pharmacy going back to pharmacy yeah. school it's like so you have a choice whatever you decide and um he called me like 48 hours before I was supposed to take off to school. I had already had my transcripts done. I was already, I was ready. I yeah. had 10 racks saved already. I was ready, you know, uh, to, to go to school. And um, yeah, he's like, hey, man, you, you still want to do that store? And I was like, let's do it. So, uh, yeah, so it moved to San Antonio. And when I came into that company, they were at four locations. No POS system, no clock out system, no sales tracking they didn't understand there was no there was like bare bones nothing yeah when i exited we're at 28 locations very sophisticated multi-regional one of the largest brick and mortar nutrition stores in texas and most of the franchise and um yeah really proud of the work that i did back then. yeah man you did good like because i swear like i remember back when it was just that one location that i've seen and then On weber yeah and then next thing i know man they're everywhere uh, whether yeah. it's College Station or um, I'm in Victoria or San Antonio or anything, yeah. you see them pop. So I had a question. So being in that game, when you saw all you were dealing with all the helping make these records, who was the most type, who was the, I guess, your number one type of person that would come in looking for supplements? Like, who who would be looking for it and why would they be looking for it? Mm, you know, it's, 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 you know it's, it's funny. You know, people think of, people think of supplement sales or supplement products and that whole mm-hmm. industry of bodybuilders and, you know, the swole bros, yeah. the protein bros. Uh-huh. And don't get me wrong. Like there's definitely an audience of health individuals that come in looking for stuff like that or that they know that they want. Mm-hmm. But the vast majority of, of people that I worked with were people that they didn't really know too much about supplements. Mm-hmm. Um, they were just, you want to call them the average Joe, which is just an average person that just, they just wanted to like just take a dive into a Okay. Hey man, I'm 20 pounds overweight. Hey man, I'm really fat. Hey man, I, I don't feel healthy. Yeah. Hey man, you know this. Hey, you know I, all these different things. And so for me, because I had my health degree, you know, I was I was giving them the sup regimen, and mm-hmm. then I was also like calculating their target heart rate zone mm-hmm. for their cardiovascular uh, yeah. workout, so that way they could get into a fat. Because in the in, in nuclear medicine, there's something called a myocardial perfusion imaging test, right? Where we have to put them on a 
treadmill. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, it gets complicated, but there's a certain thing we need to get their heart rate to a certain extent on a treadmill before we do the injection for the radio pharmaceutical. Um, but there's an equation there's a, there's a, to get their heart rate based off their age. And so basically I took that formula and how everybody that would come in there for weight loss, I was actually doing like their formula for mm -hmm. their weight loss or their target heart rate. Plus all this other stuff. So I like my game was, I was like, man, I'm just going to help everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah, get yeah, transformed. Everyone, everyone's good. Everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. So it was, it was pretty cool. But the average person, man, it's just somebody that just wants to live a healthier lifestyle. You know, and it's funny. You hear that, say that, and you see it all the time with these big like sports teams, right? They have someone like you on their, on their staff trying to get these players to optimize their, like their, yeah. their, their crazy potential to just always be 110. How can they be faster? How mm -hmm. can we make them quicker? Yeah. What can we do to eat? What can we do to structure their mind? Um, and, and I think that's where like, I was like, man, this is guy would perfectly know like what it takes to get them ready and what it takes to put in the work and, and the mindset for some of these athletes that, yeah. you know, they, this is what they do. They have to take care of their body. That is their job. Yeah. You know, you know, for an athlete out there, you know, either either listening, aspiring, or, or or just the studies, or maybe they have a family member who's an athlete. You know, it's it's crazy. As an athlete, you know, they are the machine that produces, hopefully, the outcome of a draft pick, college degree. You know, whatever mm -hmm. they can, a full ride. Right. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they didn't make it, school. but they get a full ride. Mm -hmm. You know, for a college education that they can leverage for, you know, uh. Their, their personal growth plan for mm -hmm. their future, right? Whatever it is, but it's dependent on the machine. That's yeah. internal and external, though. A lot of people think it's all physicality. I've seen some very physically fit individuals that are very fit, mentally unfit. It doesn't always align. They mm -hmm. think, it, but, but it's not always the case. You know, some people are genetically gifted, and they physicality-wise, they're very blessed. Internally, they end up squandering it. Why? Mindset. You know, and uh, we talked about this once. Um, brought up Kobe and Kobe. right and like his mindset and there is a, a Netflix documentary where you know they talk about the it was the dream team too they right it's mm -hmm. on there and there's a scene where like Carmelo and I, I think I forgot who else was with him they're coming back from the clubs in Vegas okay right like at four in the morning yeah and yeah, while they're coming the in Kobe's going out with his bag he's already getting ready to go to the gym yeah you know and they said that's it's like four four thirty in the morning. And he walked by already dripping sweat because he's already done his morning run yep. before that. Yeah, you know, and that was his mindset. One, you know, and then on top, like like if, stuff like that. And that was something you said. Like those people are the same type of people that do business, make millionaires, they become billionaires. They have that same mindset. Keep their focus in because that you know life is a game. Life is the number one sport. We got to play as you, as you put it. <sighs> yeah. No, I, I love Kobe. I saw, you know, I, I might not study as many sports stats as as uh, my, my man here, but uh, <laughs> no. one thing I do study is I study the minds of great individuals, yes. right? Because at the end of the day, to do anything great, you don't need an engineering degree in Henry Woods. You only need to know what others have done, right? And I'm a big, big fan of, of Kobe and Michael, uh, you know, just, just all the greats out there, right? Yeah. And so, but specifically with your, uh, example, yeah, I know the story very well, and you know, it's all about the mindset that really makes and opens everything, right? And it's mm -hmm. what they're willing to do. But the truth of the matter is, is also discipline. Mm -hmm. Most people do not want to adhere to discipline. It's too difficult. Yeah, it's too difficult, right? But Kobe knew that, that was a separator. He knew that every day, every weekend, that somebody was out partying and he was grinding, he was just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. he was just a little bit better, right? But you know, there's just some people that are wired different, and they from the get go. I mean, you know, if I were to say, give me some Kobe stats, I bet you you could give me a bunch of Kobe stats, right? I I can give you like I can give you some. I, right? I mean, I would have more Michael Jordan stats. Okay, yes, okay, can, or, or some Jordan, yeah, right? Yes, Either way, totally right? Understand but you could probably yes. give me the stats, right? Yeah. But so this is those are the things that you study, right? Mm -hmm. So what I study is there's a guy. He's 13 years old, mm -hmm. probably entering what freshman high school, something like that. There's a list that comes out for players. On the ranking, he's number 57. There's 56 names above his name on the ranking. At 13-year-old, he makes a hit list of 56 players. And he's going to go after 56 of these players. And one by one, he crosses these things off. He's meticulous, right? Mm -hmm. He's driven, vision, mindset, work ethic. At 13, some guys... They, they're able to tap into this mindset from an early age. Some people not. Look at, you know, 
Tom Brady. Tom Brady mm-hmm. wasn't a, a he wasn't a, a draft one pick. Yeah, in the you know? sixth round. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. he didn't come. He was yeah. the fourth quarterback coming in. Yeah, yeah. Right, he, but but look at this guy's track record, right? And so, it, what the beauty of it is, is that two greats, but different starting. But what was what's the common denominator? Work ethic and discipline. Tiger Woods, you know, prodigy, right? You know, kid coming in doing the putt putt. You know, when he was super young. Mm-hmm. But what 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 kept the longevity? I would even put Michael Jackson in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you anybody know. that has achieved greatness, <laughs> trust me. You know, life puts the pressure. And, on. and you know, um, one thing that's why I also this is why I wanted you here is because you know so much about these supplements, and a lot of these athletes sometimes try to cheat the system. Let's be honest; not everybody mm-hmm. has that mindset to just put in that work. Yeah. Um, it, it's very hard, very difficult, especially at a younger level. Let's say the high school level. Okay. Um, let's say even in college or junior college. Um, they are wanting to get that edge. They are trying to yeah. scratch those people out, and they take, a, you know, performance-enhancing drugs, you know, some PEDs. Yep. Um, what What do you have to say? What can you help tell some of our fans that are actually maybe in high school or in you know, college, or if they're just taking PEDs just to perform for whatever reason? Um, what do you have to say? How, how does PEDs affect you really? In? Man, you know, there's, there's uh, two ways that we can go with this, right? The mm-hmm. first way you go with it is that if we're – speaking or somebody in regards to a sports aspect, uh-huh. um, you know, first of all, uh, it's, it's not acceptable to use any sport for your human investigation because there's testing, there's testing quality across mm-hmm. the board, right? Um, and the reality of it is that, yeah, you can you can do some PEDs, you know, here and there, you know, I, I don't know the, how the water works or the, you know, regular testing mm-hmm. and all that stuff works, but you can do periodical things, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have to get to a point where you cannot no longer do those things. Um, you know, and you're going to have to make sure that you're relying on your God-given ability to prep it. So you're never going to be able, I've, I've seen tons of people that use PEDs and you would never know that they use PEDs. Why? Because just because you use PEDs doesn't mean that it's just, things just miraculously happen. You still have to put in the work, right? So mm-hmm. there's one, I think you can try and kind of cheat it, but at the end of the day, the work is still, the bill still due. Right, and so you, you might still when day one day you have to remove the PEDs, um, you, you'll be a, sh- a shell of the person that you used to be because you don't have that thing glued to you anymore. Right. But the other side of the fence is that if, if somebody's kind of on the younger side, you don't want to do that because it, when it starts introducing when you start introducing and playing with hormones, it's a it's a bigger game hormonally what you're doing here, and you have to counteract things and all this different stuff. Um, it, it can kind of wreak havoc on your hormone system. You have latter effects, fertility, all issue, all types of different issues. The more complex or the more um, exotic your PEDs get, because there's a lot of PEDs that can do a lot of different things, right? Um, so, in my opinion on PEDs is is uh, if it's for the sports aspect or something like that, and your sport is not testing for it, and that checks off with your values of who you are, um, or if it's okay, if it's anybody. like it's like legal for there's them some, to do there's it. There's some, yeah. you know. You know, powerlifting has an organization that's testing, and powerlifting has another organization that's not tested. Yeah, you know that's that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know? So it all depends, right? So there's different there's different uh, you know leagues. For instance, like powerlifting has a testing organization, and powerlifting has a non testing organization, right? So look, if your organization is doesn't test and it checks off with your values, your morals, and you have somebody looking over your blood work and stuff like yeah. that, you know, hey, that that's your personal walk, uh, you know, and, and have at it, right? Like I don't, I don't ever judge anybody. Um, but if your sport is testing, you're going to have to do a lot of evasive things to try and get around. And at the end of the day, um, if you're young, if you're under the age of if you're under the age of 25, you shouldn't even really be playing with anabolics unless like your sport is allows it and you're in it to win it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because after that, like. There's a lot of exotics, and you know, hey, well, this, yeah. and then this does this, and then this does this, and then you got to take this other thing to counteract this. Damn. It gets, it can get soupy. It can get a little, a little uh-huh. bit much. But my prerogative is to each his own. I don't ever judge anybody, but you know, make sure that you understand what you're doing. Make sure you understand the re- repercussions of potential hormones or mm-hmm. things that you're administering into your body. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Get your blood work done. You know, get your vitals checked. Make yeah. sure that. Make sure what's it happening under the yeah. hood, man. You, know, yeah. you can't see what's under the hood. So if you're going to do it, do it responsibly. But if you're you know, doing it for sports reasons and you're under a certain age, nah. 
Stay away from them, kids. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, if you're young, you stay under 25, don't mess with it. Don't mess with your body like that. Um, I mean, you still have a whole lot to live. It can mess up. Like you said, it's now you're done. Uh, there's all kinds of things in it. And you come, this coming an expert, man. This is an expert <laughs> right here. So this pay attention. Y'all listen. Uh, hey, I, I just remembered, just saw, are you parked? You're not parked. Uh, Pat, you're like parked halfway through, right? On the, park on the grass. Yeah, yeah, like next to that truck, like that how it's facing. Okay. Because he's going to come in and uh, park uh, the car over here, too. Okay, but yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know how. Didn't know no, how you I good? Know. You good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, man. And then um, I guess from there, we're going to just end it there, and then we could just go right into the sports. I know it's getting late for you. I don't want to. That's cool. I mean, if you guys, I mean, we're here, man. We drop, yeah. We um, want to drop something, man. I mean, so, yeah, we got that out of the PEDs. Um, we talked about the effects. Uh, so you're on performance coaching. Okay. Okay. What do you, uh, what is it that you do on performance coaching? And right now, let's say some people are inspired of what you heard today. They saw what you're doing. How can they get a hold of you or anything for some performance coaching or even just ask maybe a question about some supplements or, you know, just see what the, you know, pick your brain about things well, like well, that. We'll do this. We'll do, um, uh, thoughts on supplements. Um, like what are some common maybe supplements for like uh, athletes or whatever because mm-hmm. so, they're going to want like what can I help with okay so, like what are some top supplements that they uh, they should be conscious of that they should use in their performance regimens if they're coming off the PED they're not going to do PEDs what are they going to do right um, and then two is you know you know you do performance coaching man like what is that and like you know okay. what's the mission there whatever it is and then I can write over and then you can be like yo guys like check them out blah 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 yeah. make so, um, but I'll let you segue the question. And All right, go into it. So, perfect. All right, so coming off, we know PEDs are bad, especially if it's under twenty five. Um, stay away from them. So they want to continue to go into sports. They don't want to take PEDs. What supplements should they be looking for, and regimens that should they should be doing? Yeah, man. Um, look, it ain't nothing wrong with supplementing and and, and giving the body additional nutrients, mm-hmm. additional things to help the body perform. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So uh, what I would probably say is is the average athlete, if they're doing a lot of lifting, running, et cetera, they need to make sure they have a sufficient amount of protein. Okay. I want to get the protein coming in from whole foods, right? But obviously that can be difficult if, you know, they're a way larger athlete. But mm-hmm. a, a way isolate is typically going to be the best if they're trying to keep it nice and tight and lean. Um, there's blends out there, but uh, it's called WPI, weight. Uh-huh. That's typically the best uh, purity level. And so, uh, you know, maybe 50 grams a day, 75 grams a day, depending on your body. Basically, you know, if you're lean and you're not, you know, a lot of excess body fat, uh, one, one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass is, is a good rule. But get the protein up because most athletes are trying to maintain muscle or build muscle. Uh-huh. Muscle is composed of protein. Right? Okay. So you're going to have to have that, right? So the two – is I'm a big believer in creatine. Uh, creatine, one, it's the most studied uh, supplement out there, uh, you know, known for supplements, but it is natural. Our bodies produce creatine naturally. Um, anytime you eat red meats, red meats is rich naturally in creatine. But when you're lifting and you're performing and you're doing any type of physicality, supplementing with creatine, what that actually does is it helps your muscle tissue. It's what's called your fast twitch muscles. It helps mm-hmm. the muscles fire more rapidly explosive and so what a lot of people don't realize is that people think creatine makes them big it actually doesn't it actually helps the fast twitch muscles in your explosion so any type of fast twitch muscle so it's it's quick lifting agility anything that is required for quick burst extended energy creatine is awesome and it's natural right so it's a it's a it's a big booster mm-hmm. that's natural that you don't have to worry about it um so i'm a big believer in having that creatine then also hydration. A lot of people are underhydrated. Make sure you're having a good proper electrolyte spectrum, amino acid spectrum, something basics, non-stimulant. And again, doesn't matter what type of collegiate athlete or professional athlete, these aren't gonna violate any you know WADA or anything like that. Got you. Yeah. So, but those are some some big ones. Make sure they're keeping the nutrition proper. Uh, two, you know, I know you're doing weight resistance training or agility training. Bring the creatine in. Uh, Make sure you have the body hydration, amino acids, electrolytes, vitamins, stuff like that. So, so like when you get in, you usually help people when you put them on these um, regiments or and get them going on supplements. 
and you're you're basically coaching them, hundred uh, percent. You know, you're so I'm guessing this is what also got you into performance coaching with individuals. Yeah, a little bit, man. So the performance coaching, I I have uh, two tiers there. One is purely physicality. Um, so I do all of their custom nutrition, I do all of their custom training, and I do a little bit of mindset because a lot of people don't realize, but fitness is more than fitness, right? Because fitness breeds discipline. I mean, they don't want to work out, but you go and do it anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called discipline. In other areas of your life to be more successful, right? Um, so you know, I put a little bit of mindset. So that's kind of the entry level. Yeah. And then I have more of what I call the elite performance. And so that's gonna be different. So now that's gonna be all the physicality, all the nutrition, all the training, all the supplemental guidance, etc. But this is where you have either an athlete, uh, a business person, it doesn't matter, anybody that just wants to have they have an itch that they want more out of life. Mm-hmm don't know how to quite get there gotcha. it's just like you know um and so that's more personal development and that's really more internally and externally um and i'm basically just kind of coaching them how to get how to get there cool and if anybody wanted to get that from you where can they reach out uh, and, man uh, just and, uh, or even pick your brain about some stuff yeah, about just, getting into training like they're trying to get into it what can they where can they reach you um ig man that's my my main platform um santiago.compos1 shoot me a message if you have any questions supplement what you should be taking, what you should, what you shouldn't be taking. Um, it's easy to reach me. I'm always yeah. willing to help people. We're gonna have that on the screen so you'll know, and then it'll also be in our description. You can go and check him out um, on his Instagram. Um, dude's doing a big, big, crazy, crazy, just helping a lot of people out, helping <laughs> a lot of athletes out, yeah. getting them on the right track. If you want to get on it, let's go with them real quick. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Slice Pizza for this episode. Friday Night Sports, episode 8. Shout out to Slice. Hit him up at 361-910-3028. That's 361-910-3028 for all your pizza needs. If you just want some work, uh, you're having a work function, hit him up. Gender reveal, baby bash, birthday parties, whatever it is, hit him up. Hit up Chef Shirts or follow him at Eat Slice CTX on Instagram or Eat Slice cctx on facebook hit them up and they and they'll let you know where they're going to be at so santiago you know it is a riding high sports we're going to talk about some yeah. sports that's been going on and about a, a lot of news that's been making the yeah. rounds it's right um, on, man. yeah let's go we're gonna go right into it um so just to start off ufc you you watch ufc yeah man the big ufc guy not big, but I like it. You like you like it going out. <laughs> well, USC finally booked the sphere. You have you seen that the, yes. that big old thing in Las Vegas? It just started coming around. They finally did it. It took them a while. I think they have a contract now and with all their fights in Saudi Arabia. That's why it's been over there. Yep. But now they got it for uh, Mexican Independence Day, so September wow. 2024. It's going to be the first UFC fight in the sphere. They're already working on what to put on the globe and the show. Be massive, thing. man. Yeah, it is, dude. And what goes with that is a. Uh, do you, when you go to Vegas, you ever gamble? You ever hit the slots? or? No, I'm not a gambling man. Not a gambling man? No. It's all right. I do. I be at the crap stable, guys. <laughs> I do. Um, I have fun. I lose money. And I, sometimes I win money, but I have fun either way. ESPN just came out with a sports book app. Um, it's called ESPN Bet. Now you can now download this ESPN app, ESPN Bet. You can make your sports bets, whatever you want to bet on. You want to bet on tennis. You want to bet on weightlifting. You want to bet on dog racing, horse racing, or any kind of basketball, baseball game. There, it's now legal in 17 states. Vegas is the place, man. Dude, it's all over. So, like, wherever they have it, uh, they got bought by Penn Company. They they came in together. Now they have this app. Um, it just got – it started yesterday. So now it's free to download, and you can start putting money in and make your sports bets. Let's go. And we're going right into college football. Um, so Saturday, Texas A&M University went against Mississippi State. Um, two universities, two big schools from the SEC. They both had two head coaches. Come Monday morning, both head coaches are gone. Oh, wow. <laughs> both schools, they went from a they went from a power five conference of top schools, and they do not have a job. Uh, Texas A&M let go of Jimbo Fisher Sunday morning, even though they won 54 to 10. Um, they he still got let go. They felt like okay. he was doing mediocre. Also, Zach Arnett from Mississippi State, he was let go after that loss. And which is crazy for me as like uh, AD or sports people, when you these coaches lose their job, uh, you have to buy them out of their contract. Mm. You're basically paying them not to do their job. Yeah. Did you ever pay any of your employee not to do their <laughs> job? No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they ended up paying Jimbo Fisher seventy six million dollars. Wow. 
Um, he's got to get a 19.25 of that in the first 60 days. After 120 days, A&M owes him another $7 million, And then it, whatever's left over, it'll be his uh, annual salary wow. until 2031 when his contract's up. Zach Arnett, the coach from Mississippi State, isn't as lucky. He only got paid $4 million to leave. <laughs> so you could tell how much faith they had in him. Um, but the thing about Texas A&M, they did – Jimbo kind of dirty. Now, tell me if you think this is dirty. So, they're at the game Saturday, right? And it was in College Station at Kyle Field. At halftime, the donors or the, you know, the board of regents, they donated money, right? They donated a check of $162 million to Texas A&M's football athletic department. Wow. You know what half of that money is going to do? That half of that money just went to Jimbo Fisher to kick him out. So a lot of people are wondering, like, how are you going to pay $75 million? Well, when you just get a bank loan for 146 you yeah. can afford to pay out 75 and now they still have money to go look for another head coach and pay him top-tier dollar. It's supposed to be the most wanted job right now in the country. Wow. Would you have made that business move right there like that, get 162 mm-hmm. and then pay out the 75 to well, grow it? I'll say, I'll say what, when, when, when businessmen are moving that type of money like that, first of all, Significant amount of money like that is 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 really you know that's from a business standpoint. I mean, it's it's calculated infrastructure too. So I guess I guess the incoming money's pretty well. Yeah. Other side of the fence is uh, to to let somebody go like that and have to pay that out. Either there's some major politics, and you would know it better than me, but it's maybe the major politics or um or yeah that. Highly dissatisfied. Yeah, at that point. it's it basically was uh, as much money as they were paying him. He had the same uh, record as the previous coach, and he wasn't nearly as paid that much. He was doing mediocre, and it was time to let him go. Absolutely. Moving on to uh, Michigan. Yeah. So Michigan University had this cheating scandal, right? right. Um, they got caught. One of their assistant coaches got caught uh, sign stealing. So they would study the other team. They would have they would send people to other games yeah. to watch their opponents before they play them. So they could pick up on their sign calls. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I see so they're yeah. trying to sign still. And these coaches would play people to be in the stands. And some of them would even get down on the field to try to get these calls. Wow. They got caught. They let them go. The head coach, uh, Jim Harbaugh, just got suspended by the Big Ten. They suspended him for three games. He found They found out about it sun, Saturday morning. So the Big Ten made a decision Friday to suspend him for three games. Because he, they felt that he was. Yeah, because he's the head coach. He's the one yeah. that's sending out the. Well, he, they, he said he didn't know anything about it. Oh, okay. So he said, no, I didn't know what my assistant coaches were doing. Oh, there was the assistant. It's the oh, assistant coach, oh, right? Yeah. So, but it goes all the way back to him. Like, he wouldn't know. For sure. The only other thing I could think of is, like, you know, Sean Payton in uh, New Orleans, they had that bounty gate where they were paying people to hurt other players. Okay. And the coach said he didn't know. But even then, if he did, if he didn't, that coach got let go for a year. Um, they suspended him for three games. Michigan is trying to uh, – their university put an appeal on the, the ruling. Okay. They will be in court this Friday, and a judge is going to determine whether he sits out these last three games or they can fi- or he um, doesn't need to and he can go ahead and coach. And the court of law, if the incident to appear to be guilty, it yep. must provide proof. That's what I'm so, saying. So that'll be I, I, don't, I think he's going to be able to, to do it and come back. Yeah. So – Going into the NFL, and you know this, man, um, when it comes to just trying to get better and people came into it, they needed your supplements. And some of it's probably for uh, rehabilitation in the sense of, like, they had an injury. Yeah. So, you know, they're doing PT stuff. Well, two players in the NFL got really hurt, and they're now out for the season. Mm-hmm. It's real terrible. Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, linebacker Van Der Esch, he, um, because of his neck injury, has a se- it's going to need surgery. Yeah. He's going to be out for the rest of the season. But there is also some complications, and they think it might be a career-ending injury where he might not be able to take as many hits as he was um, with the tackle. So his future is actually up in the air. Second is quarterback Deshaun Watson with the Cleveland Browns. He fractured his shoulder, um, and he also needs surgery, and it will also be season-ending. Those two are out. And, man, you know how it is when you, you're a very important part of the team, and if one domino falls – you know, it's very easy the whole team can follow too. Or if you have, you know, you're striving for things, you know, and you, you lose one of your best players, it's kind of yeah. hard. You know, it's it's a tough battle after that. 100%. What would you tell, like, uh, somebody you were training that were in a situation like that on their team? Like, how would they get through? Like, what would you let them say? If I'm speaking to somebody and they're having somebody on their team that is a, a, a 
unfortunate event. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm speaking to somebody. I'm I'm typically speaking to the leader. So my uh, my big thing about it is we can't control everything, but I'm a big believer in uh, leadership is the problem, leadership is the solution. But if the problem is up to the leader, then that's the solution. And so the leader is guilty. So I think you've been building that that number two guy. Yeah, because right? that's yeah. that's that's the job of the leader is to number two the coach. Um, so hopefully, uh, coach has been doing well and putting effort and um, and energy into cultivating that number two guy. And you know, hey man, so some of the best players we didn't know they were the best players until the primary got hurt. Secondary came in ready to, ready to go. Right? Yeah, very true, very true. There, uh, you're not lying about that. That's exactly right. And um, sometimes you don't know. You know that. We didn't know how good Tom Brady was until Drew Bledsoe, you know, got hurt. He came in, yep. and then you know shined, and it, and it wasn't that much different with like Carson Wentz and them with the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, but you're right, man. It was exactly like that. So we're coming down to the part, man. It's games of the week. Okay. So what we do with games of the week um, is I pick out three games. Okay. Um, I, I do this with all my guests. The, at the end of the at the end of so long uh, at the end of the year, I'm gonna see how many points the guests have, how many points okay. I have. Well, I'm guessing who wins the games and everything. Okay. Right now, we're I'm up one, 15 to 14 on my guests to see if you can help the guests make some comeback. Okay, you know, and get a little up. So first game we got is the Bengals versus the Ravens. They play tomorrow night. It's Thursday night football. Okay, um, Bengals. They're very doing all right this well. So are the Ravens. They come. They have Lamar Jackson. He you know okay. good. Good quarterback right there is a stud. Who do you think would win? Let's go. Uh, let's go Ravens. You gonna go Ravens? It's a good call. I, I, I mean, they, <laughs> they might. There's a good chance they're both equally matched. I think it's gonna be a good one. I'm gonna go with the Bengals. Okay. Um, just so I can you know spread out that guest league. You know, we'll keep there it going. Go. Go. I got one for you to go back home. So we're gonna go to the NBA here. San Antonio Spurs mm. versus the Sacramento Kings. They are playing in San Antonio. Let me know. I, I think I know who you got, but who you who you yeah, who you rolling man, you with? Know, I'm gonna have to go with my Spurs, man. But you know, seen some teams come in. But once that once that dome gets rocking, man. Yeah. Yeah, they, these guys kick it up, bro. It's it's a fun atmosphere out yeah, there. It know, really pop, is. Pops don't play. <laughs> no, 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 pops. Now with Wimby too, it's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. you know, it's going crazy. I'm yeah. also riding with you. I'm going with the Spurs. I think the whole lineup for the Spurs right now. They're just. I think the shortest guy right now is six eight, six nine. They're wow, just crazy. And then you got Wimby in the mix, blocks. Running up the court, shooting threes for a yeah. seven foot four center. Oh man, it, it's crazy. All right, so last one we got it's Washington University versus Oregon State University. Oregon State is ranked number 11 in the country, Washington's ranked number five. They are playing in Oregon State, so they are playing in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Who do you got? I'll let you take the first draw. All right, on this one, I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Washington. Okay, Washington's undefeated, their quarterback actually has a chance to win the Heisman. Okay. Now, Oregon State is only has one loss. They only have one loss, and they are coming up. They are battling. I think they're a great team in the Pac-12. Um, they, you, could, you can see them make a run um, to almost for like a New Year's Six, but they're going to have to just win out yeah. the rest of the Pac-12. But I have Washington I'm, over I'm there. I'm going to have to root for the underdog on this one. You're going to root for We're the underdog? We're going to go for the O in, in their hometown. You're going to go with Oregon State? Okay, okay. okay. I'm, like I said, I'm going with Washington those are good picks. Those are our guest picks of the week. We'll let you know how we do last week. Um, we'll keep it going. Right now, we're going to go at the end. I always do. These are my parlay picks. Please do not spend your rent money. Do not spend your light bill money while you gamble. It's only what, if I was a gamble, this is what I would be betting on. These are my picks. These are the parlays. We're going to go right into them. First one I got is the tight end from Baltimore, Mark Andrews. I have him over 52 and a half reception yards. Um, Bengals struggle with, t- uh, with tight ends. Last week, he was a really great matchup. I think he does that again with Lamar Jackson. He's going to find him out in the flat. They get nice little areas. Uh, I, I think they're going to go over there, and I, I think that's a safe bet to go. You, when you played at Carroll, man, who was y'all's tight end? Oh, man, you're trying to pull back too far, man. Too far, too far. It was, it's been a minute. It's a bit, it was Chase. Chase, oh, my boy. boy yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, forgot. So, see, Chase, oh, man, man. See? You, you would you That's tra- my boy, too. See, yeah, yeah see, would you trust him to get the 52 yards? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. see, there we Chase go. Chase beast. Yeah, he was, man. We was going number two. I got on the Bengals. Uh, Jamar Chase, wide receiver, over 81 and a half yards. I think Joe Burrow is going to just – be throwing some bombs. I think they're going to be going great. Next one, we got Bengals wide receiver, OBJ. They have a really low pick, 26 and a half yards reception. I'm going with the over. 
Um, dude's too talented. I really think Joe Burrow is going to at least get him three catches. I think he can get 35 yards. You remember any of your wide receivers? Zero Gibson? Tim. Tim? Tim Price? Boy, fast. Boy, fast, right. Boy, fast. How, how fast yeah, was he, he had, on the field? He had, he had extra long arms. <laughs> he yeah, made some boy, catches, huh? Boy was, he, was, he was quick with it, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that dude was speed. I know he said uh, he had set some, all kinds of records, right? At, yeah, Division two records at yeah, A&M yeah, Kingsville, yeah. man. Track. I think he still does some, like, some training. Man. Oh, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he, yeah, he, he does arena yeah, football. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's doing some good stuff. Man, shout out to you, bro. Shout out for keep doing your hustle and keeping it strong, man. And then last, we got Joe Burrow with the uh, with the Bengals. I got him under 258 yards. I don't think he's going to throw over 258 and a half yards. I think uh, he's going to go under. And I think they can, I still think they get the dub. I think they get it done. I think he does it at a cool 210, maybe a 215, three TDs, and shit. I, th- I think he's going to do great on that one, man. But those are my parlay picks. Like I said, those are the ones I would bet on. If you want to bet, go ahead and do them. Last week, we went two out of four. So we'll see what we do how this week, and we'll get back at it. I want to thank my guest, Santiago Campos, man, for coming through, man, dropping some knowledge, yeah. telling these people what they need to do to stay fit, how to get working, how to get on their regiments, how do they can get a hold of you. One more time, how do they get a hold of you? You need any kind of coaching man, or anything to get at. You search my name on any platform, but I'm primarily on IG. So uh, if the name will be in the link, hit the link, Santiago.com. Any service, I'm happy to serve you. Man, I appreciate it, man. I, I thank you for coming down. It's your boy, Can Too. If I can, you can too. This is Riding High Sports, episode eight, live from Riding High Podcast Studios. We'll catch you later.